Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction Company. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are selling in their upcoming February of 2016 regional auction. And this one is a bit unusual. Um, it's kind of a, a different sort of gun, and it presents a very cool opportunity to do something that I really enjoy, which is to take kind of a mystery gun and try to work backwards and figure out what it really is. What, where did this thing come from, um, and what different stages has it passed through to get from the factory to where it is today? Now, if you look at the catalog description of this gun, uh, in the description text below specifically, you will find it described as a smoothbore conversion of a Spencer. Now, the Spencer, of course, was purchased in large quantity by the United States military during the Civil War. There was an 1860 pattern and also an 1865 pattern of the Spencer. Um, they were the most numerous uh, carbine purchased by the, the Union Army. Uh, in terms of actual use in combat, they were like the third most common. A lot of the purchased Spencers didn't actually see combat. Uh, but they remained a standard arm of the US Cavalry after the Civil War uh, into the Western expansion period. So they're really cool. They're an early lever action repeating rifle, one of the very first um, effective repeating rifles. They fire, originally would have fired a fairly hefty cartridge for this period, the 56 caliber, uh, well 5650, 5652, or 5650 Spencer. Uh, the, the exact cartridge changed a couple times. At any rate, it was basically a 350 grain bullet running at about 1200 feet per second. So. Uh, reasonably powerful. Uh, much more powerful than, say, a Henry repeating rifle, substantially less powerful than something like a 4570. At any rate, this one is a bit of a, a mystery in some ways. So why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at it and explore what this rifle might actually be. All right, so when I see a rifle described as smoothbore, or a firearm described as smoothbore, the first thing I'm going to do is well, if I don't expect it to be a shotgun, which a Spencer should not be a shotgun, I'm going to go check the bore. Um, it's a little hard to get a shot straight down the muzzle here on camera, but this is indeed a smooth bore barrel, and uh, it gauges out at just right about 20 gauge, which is like 59, 60 caliber. So that checks out. Now, our first, the next thing you would normally check would be where is the rifle normally marked with all of its identifying information? And on a Spencer, that's right here on the top of the receiver. Yeah, there's nothing to read there. That has all been worn completely away. So that is going to make this process both trickier and more interesting because we do not have factory information really to go on. Now what we do know is that there was no such thing as an official uh, government issue Spencer shotgun. There were some shotgun conversions of other military rifles done. Um, that would typically have been done for troops to use foraging uh, food in the field um, on the march. Uh, that was done with Trapdoor Springfields, for example. It was done with some other guns, but it was never done with the Spencer. And we know that from the historical record. So right off the bat, we can scratch that possibility off the list. This is not an official Springfield Armory conversion. Now, without this information, the next thing that we have that we can go on is a serial number. So there's our serial number, 1618. That's a pretty darn low serial number. Uh, tens of thousands of these guns were purchased by the Union, and in a couple of different serial number ranges. So with a serial number like that, there are two possibilities. This could be a pattern of 1865 carbine, or it could be a uh, pattern of 1860 rifle. So with the 1860 guns, the first 11,000 or so that were purchased were rifles, and after that, the guns uh, were changed over to carbines. Um, Springfield started uh, buying carbines, or the, the military was buying carbines at that point. So if we don't know the model number, which normally would be up here, those are our two options. Now, before we can determine which of those options this gun was, take a look at this. This side tang originally, if this were originally made as a, an infantry rifle, it would not have this tang. If it were made as a carbine, it would have this tang, and there would be a bar here with a ring to attach a single point sling to, a cavalry sling. Now, the bar is, uh, the, the tang is here, the bar is gone, 
someone has cut the bar off and replaced uh, the holes with screws. So that tells us that this was originally issued as a carbine. So between the presence of this and a serial number under 11,000, we know that this was an 1865 pattern carbine. Now we can get some uh, verification of that from the fact that it has this little device in front of the trigger. This is called a stabler cutoff, and it is a magazine cutoff for a Spencer. This little tab at the front of it prevents the action from opening any farther than this when the cutoff is engaged. So if I rotate it out of the way like so, now I can open the action farther. In this configuration, uh, it will open far enough to feed around out of the magazine in the buttstock. If I have the cutoff engaged, it will not. So this is done so that you can load the magazine up and then single load cartridges for shooting until such time as you want access to the magazine. Um, exactly the same function as the magazine cutoffs on bolt action rifles. At any rate, these were only added uh, on the 1865 pattern, although that's not conclusive because um, about 12,000 earlier guns were modified to retrofit them with a stabler cutoff. So the cutoff itself doesn't tell us anything uh, necessarily, but it's definitely indicative of this rifle being in military service after 1865. So, all right, so at this point we know that this gun started off life as an 1865 carbine. All right, we have a few more questions to answer now. This gun is currently in a rifle configuration. It's got a long barrel, uh, it's got three barrel bands, it's got a sling swivel. The carbine would have had a much shorter barrel and a much shorter wooden handguard. So did this, what, what order did everything happen in? Um, did this get converted into a rifle and then into a shotgun? It's conceivable that someone would take uh, the carbine, put on a longer barrel, uh, and then later on decide that a shotgun was a more useful tool for them and say bore out the, the barrel to get rid of the rifling to turn this into a smooth bore shotgun. Uh, it is worth pointing out here that the chamber has not been con has not been changed in any way. So while it's a smooth bore barrel that's about 20 gauge, this still uses 56 caliber Spencer cartridges. Now there were a couple of companies at the time that did manufacture shot shells for Spencers, and this was the converting a Spencer to smooth bore was a not super common, but it was a known and available op option that you could have done by gunsmiths. Uh, and the reason you would is that a shotgun in many ways was a more universal tool for someone who wanted to say be a settler or uh, travel. Um, or maybe they just wanted to shoot birds instead of deer, that sort of thing. So looking at the barrel up close we get another interesting little clue. There's the front sight from the rifle, however in front of it you can actually see the remnants of a bead sight that is no longer there. But you can feel it on the inside, you can see it on the outside. And that's, that's curious, why would someone have, first off, if, if this started off as a rifle barrel, why would you have put on a bead without getting rid of the front rifle sight? You can't even see it past the sight. Um, or if it's a shotgun, why would you have gone back and taken the bead off and put on a rifle sight? So because this has a bead sight, that tells us that this did not start off life as a rifled Spencer uh, barrel. This was a shotgun barrel that was adapted to the Spencer receiver. Now we get further confirmation of that by taking a close look at the rear sight here, which is sitting up fairly high. This is the correct style of rear sight for a Spencer, but this dovetail should be much deeper in the barrel if it were truly a Spencer barrel. So, what we can start to conclude here is that someone converted this gun into a shotgun and then later on someone else, or maybe the same person, decided that they would like to have the gun looking like a Spencer infantry rifle. Uh, as a wall hanger, perhaps as a reenactor, um, could be a number of reasons. Maybe they just like the way that looks better. So the gun was then retrofitted from being a smoothbore with a bead sight this rear sight was then installed, the bead was removed, this rifle front sight was installed, and probably at that time the wood, the front handguard on this gun, was, was replaced with a full length rifle style uh, front handguard and the proper rifle bands. 
it's interesting to note that, for example, this front band is pretty nice. This rear band, or middle band, is, is pretty nice. The bluing on that sling swivel is much, much better than anywhere else on the, the rifle. But then this rear band has a bunch of uh, pitting and finish wear on it. So what is probably the case is that as a shotgun, this had a short handguard, because why bother with a long handguard? And this is probably the original rear barrel band, perhaps dating all the way back to when this was actually an infantry, or a, uh, a cavalry carbine. Then when it was retrofitted to look like an infantry rifle, someone acquired probably reproduction, uh, or new manufacture, middle and front barrel bands to complete the piece. So I think that's about as much information as I'm going to be able to pull out of this rifle from what I have available to me. Um, my conclusion on this, and I may be wrong, and if I am I would love to hear from folks who uh, have more detailed knowledge of the Spencer, but my conclusion here is that what we have started as an 1865 carbine. It was at some point in civilian life converted into a smoothbore shotgun uh, with a short wooden handguard, and then later on converted again to look like an infantry rifle despite still having a smoothbore barrel. Well thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and I always enjoy um, taking a, a rifle like this and going through the process of figuring out what, every, what everything on it indicates and tells us about its history. So if you'd like to own this one yourself, as I mentioned earlier, the description Text below includes a link to Rock Island's catalog page where you can take a look at their pictures and if you'd like to place a bid on this for the February auction you can place a bid right through their website. Thanks for watching.